Welcome to Madame Ravens. This way to the library. She's been expecting you. My Viking ancestor found the first haunted house. By Leo. Leo of Alexandria. I'm not important to this story. Not that I have a bad self-image or low self-esteem or anything. I'm just not the focus of this story. My family history has been somewhat of a mystery, and I wanted to finally put the time to try and understand where my ancestors came from. My lineage can be traced back to some of the earliest Vikings from Norway. As far as what my parents know, we've been in the United States for at least four generations. Before that, my great, great infinity plus family history has resided in the Norse era. Pouring plenty of time and money into one of those ancestry websites provided me with a better understanding of where I came from. I don't even think my parents or grandparents know of our legendary past. We don't descend from Eric the Red or Iron Bjornside, but one man caught my interest. His name was Halthor. He hailed from a small town called Tornsburg. After settling the town and giving up the warrior lifestyle, he was part of a developed, more civilized way of life. One story, though, stood out. It is almost unbelievable. I mean, it is unbelievable. I must put this story out into the universe. If nothing else, it sure is entertaining. <laughs> Here is the story, and I did my best to explain it in modern terms, based on the texts I've been able to get my hands on. Athor was part of a fierce Viking group. They traveled throughout what would now be called the European world. One town they entered, Markath, proved to hold one of the strangest stories. Thankfully, he had the foresight to document his strange experience. I'll do my best to write this in his perspective with a modern touch. I finally entered the great city of Markath. It's like nothing I have seen before in all my quests. The gigantic towers are unlike any structures we have seen. There's a wheel-like device that is turning water, and the kingdom behind it is as impressive as the gods' palaces. We are not here to kill, burn, or plunder. We are simply traveling now to find a place to call our own. This is more of a resting point than anything else. As soon as I step foot onto the copper-looking trail, a dark soul unsheathed a dagger, plunging it into a woman selling cabbages and other vegetables. I've seen more death than life, but this was still somewhat shocking to me. The man yelled something in a language I did not understand and ran towards the town. I was confused, but after shaking off the initial shock, I sprinted after the attacker. Before I succeeded in covering more than ten steps, I was stopped by a beggar. The cult of the Forsworn, he spoke. I wanted to throw him away from me, but I could see in his wide, bloodshot eyes that he had more to tell. The cult has resided here for decades. Please help us. Please help us. Oh, warrior of the prophecy. I lowered my axe and asked him what I had just witnessed. The people here have been terrorized by the Forsworn. I believe the source comes from that abandoned house. The house we cannot find. Can you help us, warrior? Me again, present time. Can you imagine the confusion Hathor felt? He was a Viking. He killed many people. Unfortunately, these included women and probably by proxy children. I didn't say he was a good man. Was it just how it was back then? Mm, not for me to say. I don't agree with it, just putting my two cents in here. <laughs> Something about this murder taking place in front of him struck him, out of all the death he'd seen. Mm. Back to the story. The beggar told Hathor that he believed the house was used for demonic rituals. The demons that laid the town of Markath had influenced many souls to carry out unspeakable acts. After a little time, Hathor decided to accept this quest and to find the abandoned house. 
The warriors at his command were instructed to find the nearest place to rest. Using the gold they had acquired to make them comfortable, Hathor was now invested in finding out what he could about the demonic cult. After some time, the beggar led me up the jagged stairs, pointing towards the sky. It is the mountain. Follow the stars. None of us can find it. Only a high-ranking warrior will be able to combat the beast. I, the warrior Hawthorne, have been traveling up these stone stairs for what seems like days now. I have felt no evil, nor have I seen any abandoned dwelling. I haven't seen anything, just endless miles of climbing. Then I saw it while resting, placing my gaze upon the ground ahead of me. A branch of holly was fashioned in what looked like a crude arrow, pointing to my right. Slowly focusing my attention to where the arrow pointed, I see a wooden door. The door has a giant iron handle, and it looked like only a man of my size could perfectly enter. Like the door was sized for just me alone. I wasted no time in attempting to intrude. After a mighty kick, the seemingly impenetrable door fell off its hinges. Nothing but darkness greets me. One step in, and I can only see a stairway going into a basement. It smells of death and misery. My torch will not light. Finally, after cautiously reaching the bottom, a thunderous voice booms, omnipresent. Good work, warrior. Turning around, the dirty beggar is now behind me. He looks stronger than when I first saw him. His white eyes and bright white teeth are all I can see. The demon continues, This follower wishes to sacrifice you to me and the Forsworn. The earth shakes like nothing I've experienced. A deep, throaty yell starts to pierce my mind. He is weak. Kill him. I can't kill this innocent man, I think. At the end of this thought, I feel footsteps quickly encroaching on my position. A shiny blade appears. Before I know it, my axe is out, and it is red with blood. The beggar, or whoever he was, is on the ground, nearly split in half. The shaking crescendo and darkness envelop all I feel. The house settles. Not before long, the voice rises again. Good young warrior, claim your reward. A door opens slowly in front of me. It appears I will be going deeper into this pit of the damned. Swiping cobwebs away and brushing unknown insects from my face, I finally see the light. Under the light is a rusty mace. Impressive. If it didn't appear to have no attention paid to it since it was forged, I made my way towards it. This was my reward, after all. I assume for ridding this area of a lowly man. He was trying to kill me, too. Before I could touch the mace, a giant metal cage appears around me. Dark magic, I presume. Baal. Now that I have your attention, I need your help, warrior. The demonic prince appeared from the shadows, looming over me. Huh, me again. Present time. Just wanted to put this into context for the time. The Vikings did have their own religious ideas, but not as we know them today. What I'm trying to say is that they were certainly not traditional Christians. They believed in their version of Zeus and the Viking heaven, Valhalla. Bilal is an ancient demon that I don't think many Norwegian Vikings would have been aware of. He is a terrifying entity. Well, back to Hathor. The massive demon towered over me. Yes, young Hathor, leader of the Berserkers. A magnificent man. A strong man. You don't look so strong to me now, do you? Let this cage open and we will find out, I said. 
I've faced sea beasts, cyclops, madmen. I'm not afraid of this demon. Belial laughed loudly. Ah, I knew you'd be the one to help. The rogue priest. Behemoth has stolen my power. I have been cursed to this forsaken place. I don't even control the Forsworn anymore. But they still do as I would want them to do. All I really want is to take my rightful throne in the netherworld, and I will leave this horrible, earthly realm alone. Bring Behemoth to me, and you can have the most powerful weapon that my father has ever made. And if I refuse, I said, well, the only power I have is here in this room. And if you refuse, I will use it to make sure I see your body drained of blood and crushed of bone. You're bound to me now, son, even when you leave here. Looks like I don't have much of a choice. <laughs> Smart warrior, he said. Here, take this holly. The demon placed the green and red bow into my hand. Force this to the forsaken priest, and he will follow you back to me. All I know is he is east of Marketh. I have traveled far. I have traveled wide. On the fortieth day, I have finally reached a small settlement. Lipping into the town, thirsty and starved, I was met by a young woman. Let us get you in, sir. What are you looking for here? I was dazed. I looked around, seeing various animals, carts, and shocked villagers. One thing caught my eye. A cross, crudely etched into a tower. I was able to raise one weak arm towards the cross. I gladly accepted water and a crust of bread, remembering my quest and wanting to end this as soon as possible. I burst through the chapel. Candles were everywhere. The priest, Behemoth, was waiting for me. His flowing robes was beautiful. The jewels he wore were impressive. Where did he get all of these? presiding over such a small town. You, the Norse warrior, he spoke. I smirked, tired and getting angrier at the idea of this ridiculous forced quest. You know I am, I said. I wasted no time in producing the holly that I have from my back pouch. The priest's face immediately grew long. The holly transported from my possession binding his hands. Lead the way, he said. I'll spare you the journey back, as it mimicked the journey to the priest. I entered the city of Marketh, with Behemoth in tow. I drug him up the stairs until the door appeared in the side of the mountain. Again, the abandoned home shook. Out of the darkness appeared the demon Belial. Mm, good work, my friend. What say you, Behemoth? Last words, perhaps? The priest that lost his way attempted to speak, but was frozen as Belial reached a demonic limb in his direction. Before my eyes, the priest Behemoth rose from the ground, the veins in his neck bulging and his skin turning as blue as the Norwegian sea. Belial, now bearing a smile that showed an impossible number of blood-red sharp teeth, instructed me to torture the priest until he submitted. I did as he asked, committing the most ferocious acts I'd never thought I would be capable of. Through all the pain, the priest did not submit. Getting tired of this display of brutality, Belial snapped the neck of the priest, only to bring him back to life and have me to it again. Mercifully, Behemoth finally gave up after I again broke his bones and soul. Finally satisfied, Belial accepted his submission. 
The earth shook and a blinding light consumed my vision. Pulling myself up off the ground, I take in my surroundings. I'm at the entrance to a temple of Marquette. The voice of Belial entered my conscience. Take the mace, warrior. You have released me, and in turn, I owe you your prize. The once rusted mace was now sheen and ivory black. The power emanating from it is unspeakable. I don't know what happened from this point in the life of my ancestor, Hathor. This is truly disturbing story from hundreds of years. <laughs> maybe over a thousand years ago. I had a hard time finding an actual date. Is it true? I hope not. But for some reason, I believe it. Don't look into your ancestry unless you're ready to accept what you see. So quoth, this raven... Thank you so kindly for stopping by my chateau, my darlings. It does mean so much to me. Please, if you have not subscribed, as many of you have not, please do so. Give me a like so I know what you would like to hear. And comment. I always love to read your comments. And special thanks to my Patreon and membership supporters. Ciao, darlings.